Now, there are a number of different causes of histamine intolerance, and I want to go into some of these, and I want to say that the biggest cause, in my experience, um, that, I, that I really want to point out is this one right here, this GI inflammation. This has actually been pretty well studied, and we see this a lot in patients with celiac disease or people with non-celiac gluten sensitivity, but gastrointestinal inflammation. Now, there's a lot of things that can cause GI inflammation. Um, one of the things that causes GI inflammation is a gut infection. Right, so an infection in your GI tract, like a parasitic infection or bacterial or a viral infection within the GI tract that can lead to GI inflammation. Why? Why can that affect it? Because there's an enzyme in your gut, predominantly expressed in your gut, called DAO. That stands for diamine oxidase. And this enzyme breaks down histamine. And so if you have gut inflammation, and the inflammation is damaging your body's ability to express this enzyme, okay, in essence, this is down, then histamine breakdown is, is not happening, and so histamine levels build because we eat foods that contain histamine. We're also exposed to different chemical agents that cause us to release histamine, but again, where we see the most power of this enzyme is in the gut, so anytime we have inflammation in the gut. So again, infection can cause this. Food allergy can cause this or food sensitivity. Chemical exposures can cause this. So chemical exposures, you know, you get food additives, food dyes, food preservatives. These are not foods. These are chemicals that can damage your gut, uh, gut's ability to properly produce diamine oxidase to break down histamine. And so again, you got, these are the primary causes of GI inflammation against what you put in your mouth, right? You, you know, you get exposure to different types of infectious microorganisms by touching your face, eating, etc. So it's what you put in your body, the food and the chemicals within the food that can trigger the GI inflammation that can lead to the digression or the suppression of the production of the chemical that breaks histamine down, which means histamines are now in a high quantity. And when you have high levels of histamine, we go back to all those different symptoms as symptoms of allergy, but there's also a lot of neurological symptoms, headaches, and other symptoms that can manifest. So GI inflammation, in my experience, one of the biggest, one of the most important, and definitely one that if you have a disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or celiac disease, or upper inflammatory um, bowel disease of unknown origin, meaning your doctor says you're inflamed but you don't know why, it's very important to help, to help understand why that exists, why that inflammation is there, because if you've got it, it's going to inhibit your body's ability over time to degrade histamine. And so then what happens is histamine starts to build up, because again, we eat a lot of foods that contain histamine as well. And if your body doesn't have the enzyme to break those histamines in food down, then that excessive histamine starts to become a burden. It starts to overload your system. We also know bacterial imbalance, as we mentioned here, infection, but bacterial imbalance and this is, um, I've seen this be the case in people that have, you know, low levels of, we'll call them just for simple good guys, right? The, the microbiome is ripe with different species uh, and microorganisms, but the good, the good guys, the ones that are supposed to live there, the symbiotic bacteria that help you digest your food, break your food down, help your body deal with food, help your immune system regulate, so a lot of times people have, they take an antibiotic, for example, and they wipe out their good flora, and what's left is a reduction here, and that imbalance can contribute to, again, a reduction in the ability to generate that diamine oxidase. So again, this, as I mentioned, medications up here with the antibiotic, right? It's not only the antibiotics can contribute to this, there are certainly other drugs that can block or interfere with the a O. And I, by the way, I have a comprehensive list of these things for you guys over at Gluten Free Society. I'll be sending it out in an email now, a little bit later this week. So if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, make sure you head over to glutenfreesociety.org. Sign up for my newsletter so that you can get the follow-up show notes. We email those out every week after the show. So they don't, we, we won't post them here 
at this channel. We'll post them and send them in an email to you, but get on my email list so you can get that. We have a comprehensive list of medications. There's certain blood pressure medications that can disrupt histamine. There are other types of drugs that are taken for various sundry reasons that um, can block your body's ability to break down histamine and create or lead to or contribute to a histamine intolerance. We also know the menstrual cycle, as I mentioned earlier. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in just a minute. We know nutritional deficiencies. This is a big one. Um, nutrient deficiencies, specifically the big nutritional deficiencies that can really impact uh, directly the ability to break down histamine. The first is vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is a natural antihistamine. This, this works by stabilizing mast cells. So one of the things, I don't know that I explained this yet. Let's talk about this for just a minute. Let's make some room here. So, um, one of the things you want to understand is you have these types of immune cells in the body called mast cells. And mast cells are, again, they're specialized immune cells. They have histamine within them. And on the surface of your mast cells, you have these antennas or receptors, immune receptors, if you will. And um, what happens is, so for example, let's say you're allergic to a particular food or a substance. So food allergen okay, binds to this antenna, sits in this antenna. And what happens, that sends a message into the cell to degranulate and release histamine. And again, histamine's job is to, is to help open up blood vessels to that area. It's, it sends chemical messages to the rest of the immune system so that your immune system cells can come to this area to help you fight and neutralize that food allergen. So this is actually a normal natural response. Again, these are called mast cells. So you might be thinking, what about mast cell activation syndrome? Um, a lot of people have asked about that, MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome, which is when these cells become over -bar uh, bombarded. In essence, they're just constantly spitting out histamine. And there are a number of things that can do this. Food allergens can certainly play a role in it, um, but so can other environmental exposures. Mold exposure can do this as well. Very common activator of, of uh, mast cells. So a lot of people end up developing histamine elevation and histamine intolerance as a result of these things happening. So understand that your body produces histamine naturally and, and it's, it's in these mast cells where we produce that histamine, but then we also eat foods that can contain histamine. Histamines are a natural part, let's back up, a natural part of your, um, of your diet. Now, in addition, to, in addition to that, so you can, again, you can, you can produce them internally, you can eat them externally. The older the food, okay, the, the higher potential for histamine. So, the, you know, where we first learned about histamine was actually in, in fish, allergic reactions to fish uh, as histamines build up. A lot of the ways that we preserve fish today, even yet today, is with salt. And there are certain bacteria that are not destroyed by salt. So if that food is preserved in one way and as it ages, those bacteria that are still within that fish, and we're using fish as the example here, build up the histamine levels. So the older, the more aged it is, the more histamine it's going to contain. That's why fresh food is always best when you're trying to follow along with a low histamine diet. Okay. So moving right along here, so nutritional deficiencies. So I was talking about mast cells. What we're saying is vitamin C stabilizes the membrane around your mast cells, so it makes them less apt to just constantly spew forth histamine. So it helps stabilize those mast cells. Copper is very important for the breakdown of, di or of, of, of histamine by helping with the production of diamine oxidase. And then B6, Vitamin B6 is also important in the, um, in the metabolism of histamine. So these are three nutrients, oftentimes not very discussed as it relates to histamine. Most people have heard of vitamin C uh, somewhere along the lines of being kind of a natural antihistamine, which it very much is through its mast cell stabilization properties. But these three nutrients are very, very critical and crucial for for maintaining healthy histamine levels, and that's why you see over here nutritional deficiencies being one of the major triggers. 
And then we also have histamine rich foods. So histamine releasing foods and DAO inhibiting foods. And we're going to talk about those in just a minute. I'll give you a list of some of those before uh, we go to questions tonight. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.